Hello and welcome to Wendell's Guide to Doing Shadow Pan Monastery Gold as a Hunter. Um, so this first trash pack, just make sure you're AOEing all the AOEing and MDing all the ads onto the tank. Um, fo focus on killing the warden though. Once you get this trash pack down, um, kind of be careful with your pet because your pet's positioning will actually aggro other mobs, which you may not want to do. But basically, from there, you're going to want to kill and AoE these uh, mobs down. I'd recommend actually targeting the ones in the front rather than the back just because. That way your pet will attack those ones in the front, and if they attack the ones in the back, though, you're probably going to aggro the, that other pack. Like, just happened. <laughs> um, once you get these, all these ones AoE down, though, just go ahead and focus on the warden again. AoE all the uh, adsy spawns, and just focus the warden down mainly. Because otherwise, they'll just keep summoning more and more and more. At this point, you're going to want to, if you're the hero person, then you're going to want to have your hero pet out and pop hero about this point. Along with a, uh, all of your different spells and abilities and everything, pop all your cooldowns and stuff on this boss. So you're going to want hero, readiness, all that stuff on this boss. Go ahead and once you get the main guy down, the panda guy, just go ahead and all stack up over here to the left side while the tank is stacked on the right side. And that way you can avoid the breath that the dragon does. And just DPS down the Azir spirit. Just make sure you're stacked on the left and the tank is stacked on the right, or vice versa. Once the Azir Spirit gets down, you're going to want to kind of just stack on top of the uh, center here. And just quickly kill the boss's remaining HP. So just kind of stack in the center for AoE heals and quickly bring him down as quickly as you can. Um, from here, you can actually skip this trash mob which is what we do, we actually skip the trash mob if you stay as far to the right as you can. And then just kind of kill these ethereal shawls up here. Although ironically, I think at the very end we're going to have to come back and kill it anyways, but it just depends on uh, how many mobs you kill along the way. So just kill the ethereal shawls. Um, They'll do an explosion towards the end of their life if, I think like the last 20% they'll try and do an explosion, so just interrupt that. Otherwise, just make sure you're killing as quickly as you can. Bring them down, like, pew pew. Um, from here, I like to go ahead and camo and then stick as close as I can to the right side so I can get past that one trash pack and then you're just going to want to mount up once you get past that trash pack and 
try to do your best to dodge the arrows coming in and get all the way to the temple. Um, you can go ahead and throw down some traps and stuff too once you get it here. Because you're going to have to do a lot of AoE and just do your best to AoE all these trash mobs down while at the same time trying to stay out of the uh, various things they do. It's kind of hard. Like You want to just stack up uh, so that you can AoE them all down, but at the same time you don't want to be stacked so you because otherwise you'll just have a whole bunch of mobs abilities coming on in the same area so just do your best to AOE them as best you can though while avoiding the charges and other stuff that they do the main thing is to get them all down as quickly as possible so you can get to the boss here or the mini boss rather Get them down, keep getting them down. Takes a couple minutes to bring them all down, unfortunately, but you should do your best. I think this is probably gonna be the last, yeah, it's gonna be the last one. Once you get the um, all these mobs down, you can go ahead and basically pot for this next fight. Um, it takes a few seconds for them to actually come down, but you can go ahead and pot or pre-pot or whatever. But you don't want you you can pop your pots and you can pop your beastal wrath, but you don't want to pop anything outside of like your one minute cooldowns. Because you're going to need you're going to need them for the uh, other fight. I mean, I guess you could if you want to, but I recommend using them for either this next boss you're about to get to or the boss afterwards, so one or the other. So once you get up here, just get in, make sure you get inside and then MD the boss under the tank. Make sure you stay at range. Make sure you uh, get. A, make sure you're not saying tornado kick either when he does that. Um, occasionally, he'll split himself into three. Basically, just shoot all three until only one of them is left. If you hit. It'll just take like one hit to kill his uh, mirror images or whatever. So just go ahead and target the one you're assigned to, shoot it, then go and target another one and shoot it as well. This one actually happened to be the real one, so I didn't have to go to the do the other one. Basically, you should be assigned a pre-positioned spot to shoot. And then another person will be assigned another pre-positioned spot to hit. And then that way the two mirrors should die almost instantly. And then you can just focus killing the actual bad guy. Boss. And he'll, he sh he'll probably do it twice throughout the fight. 
um, towards the end, he'll also, like, kite someone, try and chase after them, so if he chases after you, just make sure you kite him. But, not that big a deal, just make sure you kill the mirrors, make sure you kite. Um, from here, you're gonna want to dismiss your pet. Make sure your Dire Beast also fades. And then you're going to want to go ahead and use Aspect of the Pack. And probably, if you have a Rogue, that's really helpful for getting past a large part of this right here. And then once you get past this, um, you can see about here our Rogue's thing will fade. So at that point, you're going to want to pop uh, Invis Pot. And hopefully, your Invis Pot, if you did it right, you should be able to last all the way here. Um, having a rogue is really helpful for skipping all that trash. So, And then once you get all the way out here, just go ahead and resummon your pet. Turn off aspect of the pack and kill the mob, little mobs and everything that are here along the bridge. may have to kill a couple extras as well just depending on where they are but they have pretty low health so once you get here you're going to want to try and have hopefully all of your cooldowns um, basically your job is going to be I would throw everything you have onto the pet or like um, throw everything you have cooldowns and all that stuff on top of Shaw but your your job is mainly going to be to distract a shot the little ads that spawn towards you um, and kill them because you're going to be ranged so you want to kill the little ads from a distance so that you don't get hit by the explosion they cause so just do your best to basically shoot and distract a shot all the little volatile energies that spawn and kite him around and stuff and kill him. Um, also, about halfway through the fight or so, you'll want to pop hero because everyone will be getting a debuff that increases the damage they can deal. So, if you pop hero halfway through the fight, then they'll have several stacks of that debuff, which means they'll do a lot more damage than at the start of the fight. Um. But yeah, just otherwise, just do your best to kite these little small ads around. Make sure you move out of the Shaw Spikes, the circle on the ground that appears underneath you. And when you make sure when you kill those little volatile energy things that they just die, preferably away from other people so that they don't do their AoE blast on top of other people. Um, that was probably the hardest boss we had, I think, um, just because it's, I was the only range. <laughs> uh, from here, you're just going to want to AOE down all these packs of mobs. Um, you may be assigned to actually click on the one guy that's floating around. And basically, whenever you click on that one guy, he will allow you to actually kill the rest of the mobs, trash mobs, so if you don't click on them and get them uncorrupted, then you can't actually kill these mobs, so very important that you do that. Um, either you might be assigned to do that or someone else might be assigned to do that, but 
In either case, just keep AoEing all these mobs. Kill all the trash. Um, once you've killed this second pack, you can kind of actually like leap down and enter the water. And then skip a couple of the other trash mobs across the bridge. So you can see we actually like run into the water and that way we can like skip some of these trash mobs over here. Um, this pack, what you're going to want to do is basically, as being ranged, you want to kill the Hateful Essence as quickly as possible. So just MD all the adds onto the tank and then just quickly kill the Hateful Essence because you need to get, make sure that dies ASAP. And then swap over the next Hateful Essence and kill it ASAP. Once they're dead, make sure you uh, get the corrupted panda and uncorrupt them. You see he's currently glowing right there, so he's good. And that way we can kill the rest of the trash pack. And then if you can, try to throw out a couple interrupts as well. So Hope your healer is out as well. Now some people skip this trash pack, some people don't. It's kind of risky not pulling them simply because of the chance that the um, hateful essences can spawn near them, thus spawning just, um, and if that happens it'll basically make it so that you'll aggro them while you're fighting the boss. So I would recommend you actually kill them, but you don't have to. You can skip them like we just did. Which, if you do, basically just pop all your cooldowns, do as much damage as you can to the boss. Whenever you see Gripping Hatred occur, go ahead and quickly swap to them and kill the Gripping Hatred as quickly as you can. Um, watch for when the Gripping Hatred is actually about right, like about finished with its whole cast timer as well. Because if you notice when it finishes its cast timer, it's going to actually pull you into it. And the trick is, if you pop your um, extra action button, you can see off to the side, if you pop that right when it's about to pull you in, and it's about to finish its cast, you'll actually avoid being pulled in, and that will save a lot of damage and all that stuff. So I would recommend just kind of watching the timer when it's going to fit about to finish its cast. You can see it's almost finished. I pop my um, extra action button, and by doing that, I'm able to avoid being gripped in like everyone else just got gripped in. Which, in turn, also coincides to when you should be about hitting your extra action button anyways to get rid of all the extra hatred, so... But otherwise, just stay out of the boss's um, AoE and just do your best to kill the gripping hatreds as quickly as you can. And then when you see its cast is about right, about done, just go ahead and use your extra action button, and that will do that. So you can see here we actually because we skipped that one mob towards the beginning. We now have one mob that we need to kill, which we were freaking out about, and we ended up dying, and we were like, oh no, what do we do? What's going on? Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> we tried killing one of these guys, and we were like, no. So we would have had like two minutes left on our timer if we had just killed the mob to begin with, but because we didn't. No, we've got to kill one mob, and unfortunately, we just wiped, which is bad. But fortunately, we managed to salvage it. <laughs> so, at this point, we ran back in as quickly as we could to get to that one mob that we actually skipped over. We were like, oh god, oh god, run, run, run. 
literally race to get to it as quickly as possible. We were like, no! Oh, you oh, need it! Yeah. See, we got one minute left to get to it and kill it as quickly as possible. We're just popping our rocket fuel or rocket boots and everything, trying to get to it. I thought, yeah, I actually just popped here or there just to kill it. I was like, ah. Kill it, kill it, kill it with fire. <laughs> <laughs> and that is how you get Shadow Pan Gold, so. I would actually recommend not skipping that mob specifically for that reason, but. It just depends on what. Just know what mobs you need to kill beforehand. What mobs you're going to skip, what mobs you're not going to skip. No, just, as long as you know you're going to get the required amount of mobs you need to kill. That sucks killing the boss and going, oh, we've still got one left to get. <laughs> so, hopefully, you found this guide helpful, and thanks for watching.